how are you and uh, i welcome all of you to this new session where we are going to discuss another congruence criteria so uh, let's uh, carry on with our uh, work and uh, in the previous few sessions we studied about congruence isn't it and uh, there were two criteria and we studied that if those two criteria are met then two planar polygons are congruent what are those criteria first one was that uh, each of the corresponding angles have to be equal right so there is let's say two triangles are there so as i keep on saying you have to imagine that in your mind that two triangles are there so the base angle left hand side base angle is equal to left hand side of the base angle of the second triangle right hand side of the base angle of the first triangle is equal to right hand side base angle of the second angle and the two vertices here top right they are equal so each of the three angles are equal point number one and the ratio as uh, or not ratio sorry the sides a b let's say this one side here and this one here they are equal this one here this one here is equal this one here and this one here is equal right so without pen and paper also you can conceive this idea in your mind and understand what is meant by congruent triangles or polygons if there is there are two polygons then again each angle has to be equal corresponding angle has to be equal and what each corresponding side also has to be equal okay in the previous uh, sessions we discussed about one criteria which was sas criteria and we also learned that in case of triangles you don't need to prove all the six elements to be equal when i say six elements meaning what there are three angles you have to equate isn't it a to p and uh, b to q and c to r right you remember and uh, the ab is equal to pq bc is equal to qr and uh, ca is equal to rp right so these are three of uh, there are six equalities equations if you notice uh, for any polygon but triangle i'm re-emphasizing for any polygons quadrilateral pentagon hexagon for any such what uh, polygon you have to establish both all six of them or in fact uh, the angles in equality and the sides equality have to be separately established but in case of triangles we learned it's not necessary and uh, out of six if we uh, prove three to be equal out of six elements three angles and three sides and uh, if we prove that three elements out of these six are equal into triangles then uh, the triangles are congruent but not any three of these six there are particular combination of these three right out of those six if a particular combination we have studied those in previous grades in these sequence of videos we are uh, establishing their proofs and convincing ourselves that yes it is true right so what i'm trying to say is that um, there are few rules for triangles and triangles being lovely geometrical entities beautiful creatures I, I call them geometric creatures very very interesting lots of good properties so for them only few conditions are there one condition sas we studied last time which was side angle and this side so side included angle and this side are equal correspondingly for one triangle and the second triangle then you know the two triangles are equal we are now going to study another one and that's mentioned on your screen just have a look it's called angle side angle congruence criteria what is that so imagine two triangles you can now you're good at imagining two triangles two congruent triangles you have to imagine and uh, let's say you have the base angle here left hand side base angle is equal to the other base angle here of two triangles the second base angle is also equal to second base angle here and the included sides are equal then they are congruent but don't mistake me when i say base angles you know you can have any two angles out of these two triangles equal and the included side that is the side which is common to both the angles are equal correspondingly of one to the other then the two triangles are congruent my friends and that's what we are going to establish today we're going to prove it and you know convince ourselves that yes if these two conditions are these conditions are met then the two triangles are congruent but what is the end result of congruence wow how and when do we know that triangles are congruent 
and i'm saying uh, we know that when again all those six inequal equalities are established three anyways we are providing we have to just prove the other three are equal and hence the congruence will establish so let's begin what are we waiting for okay so just give me a moment so that i can i can just set up my this every time disturbs at times when you know when, when you close the window it just gets gets changed anyways so let me yeah perfect okay so just give me one more okay so let me start with uh, drawing a triangle so here is the tool and is this will give me a triangle so let me draw a triangle here is one triangle okay let me confirm this and let me copy this one so i have to copy this triangle which is here so i'm copying it okay so so that i get exact copy of it so duplicate and let me take it here duplicate confirm confirm oh i didn't get a triangle basically okay let me try once again at times it does give some trouble but don't worry okay wait a minute here is the duplicate yeah so i am selecting once again so duplicate yeah now this works so let me duplicate it confirm yes now let me name the triangles what are the name guys so this happens to be a this is b and c p q r two triangles right what's given so let us start with mentioning what's given so given is this what angle b is equal to angle q so angle b is equal to angle q and angle c is equal to angle r okay so second given condition is angle c is equal to angle r and third given condition is bc is equal to q r these are given and what do we need to prove we need to prove that triangle abc a b c is congruent to triangle pqr okay just be careful with the order of the points guys that's very important fair enough now that we have a job at hand how do we approach and what do we do so what do we do here we already know that we have one uh, just a minute yeah one uh, uh, criteria we already know and what is that criteria let me write it over here that criteria is sas sas right so if two corresponding sides and then included angles of two triangles are equal they are congruent so learn that so can we use that here but then on, in this case we have been given two angles are equal and the included side only is equal the other side there is no mention about it so okay let let us see what happens if we try to you know get one more side equal that is already bc is given to be equal to qr here if we establish think about it if we establish what if we establish ab is equal to pq somehow if we establish this then what will happen then we'll get in these two triangles ab is equal to pq because we established that angle b is already given to be equal to angle q and bc is given to be equal to qr then the job is done the two triangles are congruent by what criteria by sas criteria because we have learned that before but is ab equal to pq i don't know then what are the possibilities let's talk about it so one condition is that yes indeed they are equal if they are equal ab is equal to pq is there let me take it as case one then what will happen in these two triangles there is nothing much to prove now so ab is equal to pq and uh, angle b is equal to angle q and uh, bc is equal to what qr so by what by sas by sas we can say triangle abc is congruent to triangle pqr isn't it no big deal but then you can ask a question 
sir how do you know that ab is equal to pq i would say yes i don't know so let's see those criteria as well or those condition so what if ab is not equal to pq then euclid uncle said that if something is not equal in geometry if two line segments are not equal then one of them will be smaller than the other it's common sense also mathematical common sense says that so let us say what if ab is less than or let us first take greater than okay so ab is greater than pq fair enough ab is greater than pq guys okay so if ab is greater than pq don't you think we can find out a point on on this point let's say here here i can find a point here okay what kind of point it is let's let me call this as a dash now ab was greater than pq remember ab is greater than pq i'm assuming it's not true but i'm assuming because for the sake of argument i have to prove that you know ab is indeed equal to pq and i'm saying okay you are not convinced let me say for the time being that yes ab is greater than pq okay no problem so if ab is greater than pq friends then then what can i do i can definitely point find out a point on ab here i have mentioned as a dash such that what a dash b is equal to pq let's say i can do that if two lines you're saying are not equal then you can always find on the longer line a point such that the segment the other segment the smaller segment completely fits into the longer one isn't it so that point is a dash such that a dash b is equal to pq okay now the moment we start with this assumption where does the problem arise so let's start taking these two triangles into consideration triangle a dash bc and triangle pqr let's take these two now now by assumption we are saying a dash b is equal to pq let's say by construction we are assuming ab is not equal to pq so a dash b is equal to pq okay let it be and my dear friends it's already given angle b is equal to angle q there should not be any doubt here and my friend it's also given that bc is equal to qr now if these three conditions are met then can't we say by sas what can we say by sas triangle a dash bc okay let me write triangle a dash bc is congruent to triangle qr that means by cpct corresponding parts of congruent triangles i can say but oh, i have not drawn this so let me just yeah okay so don't you think now since a dash bc a dash bc is congruent to pqr then this angle a dash cb angle a dash cb will be equal to angle r simple angle a dash cb is equal to angle r cpct but angle r was equal to angle b guys a dash cb is equal to angle b oh sorry angle c not b my bad my bad so let me just do a correction so i'm saying angle c okay a dash cb is equal to angle c now this is not possible why can you say angle a dash cb that means this angle how can the part be equal to whole so this is x and this whole is y okay so do you think x is equal to y can't pos can't be possible it happens it, it is possible it's possible it's possible when when see we have a common side bc and both the other uncommon side is on the same side of bc even if you had one common side like that one uncommon side here and one common side here then we can we could have still said that x is equal to y these two angle could be same but the uncommon sides are on the same side of the common side so hence we can't say only possibility is what that it's possible only when when only when a dash c coincides coincides ac and the moment this is there then automatically we say then a dash coincides 
A, hence, hence what will happen? Then B A dash, which was equal to P Q, will be now equal to B A. Right? Only, only when B A dash and B A are same, and you had started with the assumption that B A dash is equal to P Q, then only then this is possible. Yep. So only criteria, only condition left is that A dash and A are not two, but only one point. Right? So hence we can conclude that in that case B A will be equal to P Q. Hence now, now by I A, now by S A S also again. What will happen? Triangle A B C. Now A and A dash are coincident points, so A B C is congruent to P Q R. And we could establish for this condition as well. Case number two. Case number two. Now after proving this, there is one more case left over, and which is third case, and that's. That's what is that? That is when the the other side, or let's say here it was AB is greater than PQ. Now AB is less than PQ. If AB is less than PQ, can't we repeat the same process? So instead of taking a point on A dash, you will take a point on PQ. The only difference will be what I'm saying is let me write over here. Let us say the third case, case number three. Okay, when let me draw these lines to differentiate now. You're saying let's say A B is now less than P Q guys. This is the third case, only case left. Okay, this is not a greater than sign. A B is less than P Q. So if A B is less than P Q, then what will happen? If you see P Q. So you can find here a point P dash, which will be equal to A B. And don't you think the process will just repeat? So instead of calling ABC as ABC and PQR as PQR, you can swap the names. The concept still remains the same. It is not going to change, right? So you can repeat the process or you can say similarly, similarly, right? It's not going to change much because only names have changed. So it will not, you know, um, change the properties of the triangle. Similarly, what we can say is um, here also, in this case also, triangle ABC will be congruent to triangle pqr so in all the three cases whether ab is equal to pq or ab is less than pq or ab is greater than pq in all the cases if the given conditions have to be have to be ensured that b is equal to q c is equal to r and bc is equal to qr then the only possibility left is ab will have to be pq and the moment ab is equal to pq with the given condition that angle b is equal to angle q and BC is equal to QR by SAS congruence criteria, which we proved in the previous sessions. We can say that yes, the two triangles are congruent, and hence the criteria ASA is established. Understood? So if there are two triangles, two angles are equal, corresponding two angles are equal, and the incongruent sides are also equal, guys, then the two triangles are congruent. Congruent means you can just superpose one on top of the other and it will exactly match. So this is the second criteria which we learned. Now we will be solving some problems on these and then we'll take up some other criteria. The two criteria are still left, still left, okay? And uh, just to mention here, because it is AASA, the corollary, direct corollary would be AAS. What I mean is this, let me show you how. So let me show you this. What I'm saying is uh, AA, a S A criteria also leads to what? A A S criteria, right? Any two angle and any side. A A S criteria. Okay. What is this? Why is this also? What I'm saying is, if there are two triangles A B C, A B C, and another one, let's say P Q R, P Q R, and any two angles are given x is equal to x let's say and here is y equals to y and any side let's say this this is not included side okay bc is equal to qr if these three conditions are met then also the triangles are congruent then again we don't need to check anything else why by angle sum property you know by angle sum property of a triangle if two angles are equal then third angle has to be equal because they sum up to 180 degrees isn't it so that means this angle z will automatically be equal to this angle Z. And hence, again, you see ASA criteria is fulfilled. So this is A, this is side S, and Z is another A, so ASA gets fulfilled. 
once again if two any two angles of two triangles are equal and any side is equal to the corresponding side of the second triangle then also the congruence criteria is achieved why plainly simply because of asp angle sum property of a triangle since two angles are correspondingly equal to two angles of the second triangle third angle has to be equal and why is that angle sum property because all three of them have to sum up to 180 degrees two are equal then 180 minus these two and 180 minus these two is the third angle so third angles have to be equal so hence any two angle and a side any side need not be included side but in sas if you remember that sa that a was included angle not just any angle there okay but here asa or aas are just like you know two sides of the same coin so both are equally valid for congruence i hope you understood it but yes and unless we solve some problems uh, it doesn't get ingrained in our you know blood stream so what i am trying trying to tell you here is just after this session we'll be having some problem solving sessions where we'll be taking up some problems and solving them one by one what you need to do is understand the approach and understand how this particular theorem is being deployed over here over there to solve problems and then after let's say 15 odd sums you'll be doing you will be good to go with this theorem and can apply wherever required i hope you like this session so let's meet again in the next session thank you and have a nice day bye bye